Realme recently announced two phones, the Realme 7 and the Realme 7 Pro. While we've unboxed and taken a close look at the Realme 7 yesterday, today let's give the Realme 7 Pro the same treatment. Hey guys, Ash here from c 4 e Tech, and if you do end up liking what you see in this video, do give us a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, and turn on notifications by hitting that bell icon. Let's now get started. Let's take a look at the box itself first. To the front, we again have Salman Khan with, of course, Realme branding all over. Now to the back, there are the spec highlights. I mean, that's something we've come to expect from most phone boxes these days. And of course, there's branding all over. Nothing too different from the Realme 7 box. But once we open it, well, things still feel a lot familiar. Information booklets, a soft silicone case, and then we get to the Realme 7 Pro. Let's take it out of its protective plastic cover. The back has a nice looking two-tone finish, just like, well, you guessed it right, the Realme 7. It kind of feels similar too, despite being a bit larger. Other box contents include a whopping 65 watt fast charger, as well as a USB Type-C cable, which, as always, comes with Realme yellow accents. Okay, now that we are done with the box contents, let's get to the Realme 7 Pro and take a close look. We have this new dual-tone back, uh, this look that makes the back look almost like glass, but it is not. It's still plastic, which frankly is disappointing. Come on, Realme, glass on at least the pro version. And I'm hoping Realme doesn't get people to do videos on why plastic is great and you should you should probably want plastic on a 90K phone. And once you move to 1,5,000, miraculously, you should want glass. Okay. You know, you know what, I'm, 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 I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, I'm get, getting off topic, going off on a tangent, let's get back. The Realme 7 Pro, it does look nice, especially with the way it reflects light. And the matte finish, it helps reduce fingerprints and smudges. But hey, I'm gonna call out, if I'm gonna call out Moto or any other brands for moving from glass to plastic, I'm gonna have to call out Realme too. Cause on the Realme 6 Pro, well, they had a glass back, now they've gone ahead and moved to plastic, which is disappointing. On the flip side, this change has helped Re Realme bring the weight down below 200 grams. The Realme 7 Pro, it is more wieldable as a result. Uh, another reason for the better ergonomics is the display. It's shrunk. Instead of the 6.6 inch IPS LCD of the 6 Pro, Realme has gone with a 6.4 inch AMOLED panel here. Me personally, I'm always on Team AMOLED. So AMOLED instead of LCD, that's definitely a step forward. Well, the resolution has remained unchanged. And in fact, because of the reduction in size, the pixel density is slightly better. Where Realme has taken a step back is with the refresh rate. Instead of 90 Hertz, like with the Realme 6 Pro, we only get 60 Hertz. Well, we are still seeing phones with 60 hertz panels, even flagship ones that are priced close to what the Tata Nano was at launch. Uh, again, getting ahead of myself. That said, I still feel Realme should have used a higher refresh rate panel here. At least the silver lining is that the performance should be better as the 7 Pro has a lower workload due to fewer refreshes. Hey Ash, why does that matter for better performance? Don't they have a better chip inside? If that's the question you have, Surprisingly, the answer is no. Well, the regular Realme 6 to Realme 7 upgrade, that saw uh, Realme move from the G90T to the G95. The 7 Pro, it remains firmly stuck on the Snapdragon 720G. The 720G is no slouch. It actually is quite a capable chip. And as we've seen in the past, it's been able to breeze through most day-to-day -day activities with little to no effort. We also get six or eight gigs of RAM, dual channel LPDDR4X, alongside 128 or 256 gigs of fast UFS 2.1 storage. The software here is Realme UI based on Android 10, and it doesn't raise any red flags. It's stable, seems to be bug-free. Realme's got a few ads, but hey, they do provide a one-click disable option, which is better than nothing. So from a performance standpoint, well, there is nothing to complain about per se, you know, with the 720G and the Realme 7 Pro, this is barely, and by that I mean skin of your teeth, barely an upgrade, uh, and not really even that. The battery though, despite the weight going down, that's been upgraded for 300 to 4,500 milliamp hour, 
that might not be a big thing, but the 7 Pro does support 65 watt charging and that charger is included in the box. So Realme claims 0 to 100 in about half hour, which, which is pretty impressive. If you think Realme is up the thickness here to cram in a little higher capacity battery, that's not true. The 7 Pro is actually a tad slimmer than the 6 Pro. It feels nice in hand, the placements are quite natural, the power button is present to the right where your thumb rests, the volume buttons are to the left where the index and middle fingers rest. They are easy to reach, nice and clicky too. Above the volume buttons, we have a triple card tray. The top, here we just have a single microphone, while the primary microphone, headphone jack, speaker and USB Type-C port, they reside at the bottom. By the way, there is one major change from the Realme 6 Pro or even the 7 for that matter. The fingerprint scanner, thanks to that AMOLED panel, it's underneath the display now. It felt quite responsive. To the top left of this screen, we have a 32 megapixel selfie camera. These shots were taken with it. I kind of like the skin tones here. The details felt okay too. What about you? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. At first glance to the back, it might look like a similar quad camera setup, but Realme is up the primary camera here. Uh, it's a 64 megapixel sensor, the IMX682 from Sony. It's paired with a fast f1.8 lens. It's similar to what we got on the Realme 7. Images are good under bright light. There's a dedicated night mode for low light shots where the 7 Pro does seem to outperform its predecessor thanks to the new hardware and better processing. The other three, well, Realme, has kind of pulled a moto here. Uh, they've removed the telephoto and replaced it with a depth sensor, which again is frankly quite disappointing. As consumers, I think we can all agree that we'd rather have a telephoto instead of a depth sensor. Anyways, it is what it is. There's an eight megapixel wide angle the 2 megapixel macro, they seemingly remain unchanged. The Realme 7 Pro is a mixed bag for me. I appreciate the AMOLED panel, the more ergonomic build, the faster charging, the better primary sensor and marginally, marginally higher capacity battery. But at the same time, we are losing out on refresh rates, telephoto cameras and getting little to no gains in processing power. So this means the Realme 7 Pro it just cannot be classified as an excellent phone. It can only be called bad or above average at best. And that, what we're gonna call it, that's gonna entirely depend on what Realme ends up pricing it at. I don't know the price as of shooting this video, but I'm sure by the guys, by, by the time you guys are watching this video, you're gonna know the price. So you guys tell me, is the price good? Is it good value for money? Is it bad? Is it an above average offering? Uh, leave a comment down below. And with that, we get to the end of this video. Thumbs up, thumbs down based on however you felt about it. Subscribe, turn on notifications by hitting that bell icon if you haven't yet. And thanks a lot for watching. Till next time, my name's Ash. You've been watching C4 Retech, and I'm signing off for now. You guys have a great day. Bye-bye.